What is up Thunderstruck Gaming? My name is Defender and I'm here to talk about the Call of Duty Modern Warfare beta. Um, now first things first, I saw that Thunder really did not like this game mode and obviously I, can, I can't speak for the experience he had, but he was bashing on people who were like, oh this is the best thing ever, so considering I'm in one of the camps that's saying this is one of the best Call of Duties or things to happen to Call of Duty in a very long time, I'd like to offer a little bit of a rebuttal as to why I think this game is really good. And I actually made a list over here, right over here, <laughs> for you guys, uh, numbering and bulleting the things of why I really love this game, and why for the first time in seven years, I, I actually have an urge to continue playing. I mean, after the ground war, the beta ended, and I was playing ground war pretty much non-stop, even though I should be studying for my uh, law school exams. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I felt like a l legit, like in my bones, in my arms, like a pulse like a feeling like i need to play more of this game i want to get on like like a crack addict i don't know i don't even i don't know how to describe it but i have not been addicted to modern call of duty probably since modern warfare 3 and truthfully i haven't played that much call of duty since call of duty ghost i think that was the last game i put more than like 10 hours into i put in like a few sorry 10 days into i put in a few days into call of duty world war 2 i thought it got a lot better towards the end but i thought it was terrible at the beginning but I, I actually think that Modern Warfare is a really good game. And the first thing I, I, and let me get into my list. The first thing I want to talk about and why I think this game is absolutely phenomenal is the engine. And I don't think this is given enough credit. Now, yes, obviously, the, you can make an argument that the game doesn't play that well. But one of the things you just cannot, you just cannot argue is how good the engine is on this game. I mean, the graphics, people were comparing when the first game first came out, the graphics to Battlefield, which is crazy. Like, people are like, oh, this looks like Battlefield. The graphics are so amazing, as if that's a bad thing. <laughs> um, but yeah, the graphics, unbelievable. Um, I really think they did an outstanding job with the graphics this year. Looking at the game, just purely beautiful, like the character design. It almost looks like you're looking at a real person. In fact, I, I had the multiplayer, I think actually the campaign trailer on a few days ago, and my girlfriend goes, is that a movie you're watching? And I'm like, no, it's a video game. She's like, I didn't even know that was possible. So <laughs> that, that just speaks enough for the graphics. Now I'm going to skip a little bit to talk about the kill streaks. As you guys see, I'm about to call in a chopper gunner and a support helo, and these things are about to get me 20 kills, so just, just keep an eye out on the feed and how many kills I'm getting with these things. But going back to the engine, this thing is absolutely amazing. Not only are the graphics extremely improved, I think there was an 8x polygon count, so like the graphics are pretty much just 8 times better than what they used to be. Not only is that the fact, but this game supports 32v32, and yes, it crashed here and there, whatever, it happens, it still stress tests in the beta, but who would have thought that Call of Duty would have had it, been able to, to hold and have that smoothness with a 32v32 game mode? That in and of itself is an absolute stunning achievement. But, like, and you just can't deny it. I'm sorry, that's just not something I'm willing to concede. Like, the fact that they were able to get that game working on the, the extent it is currently working is, uh, absolutely amazing the second thing that the engine did truly phenomenally was the sound now i can't really explain to you sound because i'm not that much of an audiophile but i watched an entire video 12 minute video dedicated to a guy who just talks about sound in movies and video game and video games and specifically why modern warfare sound engine is so crazy like for example i'll, I'll just play a sound bite of a gun shooting right now We're taking Bravo. I mean, did you hear that? What oomph do these guns have? Like, it's something you've never heard before in a Call of Duty. The guns just sound phenomenal. Um, and speaking of the guns, now that I've <laughs> talked about en enough about the engine, the guns in this game are absolutely amazing. I love how they went with the philosophy that if everything is OP, nothing is OP. Absolutely love that mentality, and I'm not saying that sarcastically. If every gun is good, you don't have to worry about balancing, and if there is a bad gun, Honestly, it's fun to have a few bad guns in Call of Duty. I mean, who didn't love back in the day seeing challenges of people getting nukes or mo momentators at the, as Thunder would uh, talk about them. Uh, back in the day, just slaying people. Some weird guns. It was fun to see, like getting random class random gener generators and trying to get good games with them. It was really fun, so it, it's cool to have such variety on your guns, and the gunsmith just gives you so many things to do. I mean, during the beta in and of itself, it was just me tweaking with the M4A1, trying to get the best class set up, and then trying to tweak it to suit the gameplay I want to play. Like, for example, if I'm playing Ground War, 
I want a different setup than 10v10. I, I need the gun to be doing different things. So I would constantly play with it to try to get that perfect setup. And that just added another element that we've never seen before in Call of Duty. And that I think is a really welcome addition. Moving off of that, let's talk about the killstreaks. Now, Thunder specifically went on a rant about how bad these killstreaks were, how terrible they were, and how they encouraged camping. Now, one thing I will admit is that I do think that they not encourage camping, but encourage less objective play. But my one specific point that I thought was really funny was when the Thunder was the last time that you played an objective game mode. All you do is play free for all and TDM. So this should be a welcome addition. Whereas you don't have to get 22 kills to get the chopper gunner or the highest equivalent of the highest kill streak in the game. I mean, what was it in World War II? Like the ball turret gunner without any changes, just strictly in TDM was like 22 kills. And it wasn't even that good of a kill streak. Like maybe you'd get five kills with it. So very i'm very happy to see the kill streaks come into play if anything it actually made playing the objective a little bit more fun for me because it's not just absolutely everyone throwing themselves at it like headless chickens now it's like all right i want to go get this flag so i have superior uh position on the map and this way i can slay kids so i like this addition of the kill streaks and on top of that they're powerful as <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna curse uh hold out the cursing sorry if it sounds a little bit weird just because i don't want him to get demonetized but these these kill streaks are strong like earlier in this video i showed you a clip these kill streaks give me 20 kills now obviously they take a little bit of time getting used to and um they just do they will just do better in 10 v 10 as opposed to 6 v 6 because if there's more people to kill they're just gonna they're just gonna be getting more kills and i think that was one of the philosophies of why they actually wanted to increase the game modes is that when there's more people on the on the maps, it's just easier to do crazier things and more types of play become viable because it becomes less about you and more about less about you being part of the team and you just having a fun time. So I think the kill streaks are amazing in this game. Um, my one question is why is the juggernaut a 15 kill streak? That thing is awful. <laughs> Maybe like got two kills, fell off a building. But other than that, I love the kill streaks. The gunship, amazing, powerful, and ground where you just kill with that thing. Um, Chopper gunner goes in, veto gun, um, veto kill streak can get you like eight kills, and for an eight kill streak, that's phenomenal. Phenomenal. I don't remember the last time an eight kill streak would get you eight kills. Maybe Black Ops One with a chopper gunner, or maybe uh, Black Ops Two, Modern Warfare. Well, not even Modern Warfare Three. Modern Warfare Three, the kill streak sucked. Uh, but it, it's good to see these change of paces of kill streaks going in, and I'm glad Infinity Ward addressed it. Um, now let's talk about the modes. There apparently are. So many modes in this game that are out already. You're talking about gunfight, ground war, 10v10, 6v6, each with their own maps and each with their own unique style of play, which is, which offers something for each type of player. In addition, uh, according to the prominent leaker in this game, uh, there are a plethora of other things that come out as well. Um, meaning, like they, I think they went to the drawing board and have 80 different game modes, and then on top of that, you get to vote on which ones you want to have in the game. So. That's great to see. I mean, the more variety we have, the better. Um, so that's always good to see. The next thing that I want to talk about is ground war. Ground war. I love ground war. I, I mean, real talk. Sorry about my dog in the background. But real talk, I, I haven't enjoyed a game mode that much in ever. Like, I, I literally the second it ended, as I mentioned earlier, I just wanted to hop, hop back on. One of my complaints, though, leading into kill streaks and ground war, is that I went on a 26 kill streak and died. Why did they make the nuke 30 kills? That thing is hard to get. I already know I'm going to be raging dying on a bunch of 27s, whereas I would have had the nuke if it was a 25. So I'm a little bit annoyed about that. The next thing I want to talk about is crossplay. I'm just trying to bump out these things because this list is a little bit long, but crossplay. Yes, yes, and yes. I mean, finally, we're, we're seeing crossplay come to Call of Duty. I mean, Fortnite is clear overtook Call of Duty last year, and they were able to make crossplay a thing. So if Call of Duty wanted its crown back, this was just a, something that it had to, to offer, which is really good for the consumer. You gotta love competition. Call of Duty was getting lazy. Fortnite kicked, kicked its ass, and now it's back with crossplay, ready to fight for its uh, kingship back again. So... Really glad to have crossplay. It played beautifully weekend two. It's always nice to play with your friends on PS4 and PC without having to worry about, oh, I can't play with you because you have a different console. Especially considering I'm an Xbox player. I could never find lobbies. But playing with my PS4 friends is such a pain in the ass. So I'm really happy that crossplay is a thing. The next thing I want to talk about that I find absolutely amazing is the inclusion of DLC coming out at the same time for everyone. Um, the caveat to that is that uh, I believe la yesterday during the campaign trailer, it was revealed 
that Spec Ops is having its own survival mode that's PS4 exclusive. Now, what I have to talk about is that, let's be real, DLC coming out and being free is a huge thing, and it not coming out at the same time is an even bigger thing, but at the same time, Activision signed a contract with PlayStation saying that they have to offer exclusive content for Call of Duty, otherwise they'd get sued to oblivion. So I think the, the developers were like, listen, this cycle of having maps at different times, it's not going to work with crossplay. Um, we're not making money off of it anymore. The lobbies don't fill. We're segregating the, the player pays way too much. We can't do this anymore. And they kind of looked back at them and said, well, we have this contract. So I guess that's where they were like, all right, fine. No one's really going to play Spec Ops Survival. We'll just quarantine Spec Ops Survival to the PlayStation so we don't get sued into oblivion. And I, I guess that's what happened. So I... Honestly, I think the trade-off is really good, especially for me being an Xbox player. I don't really care that I'm not going to play Spec Ops Survival. I have so many other things to, to play, so it's not the biggest deal to me. Now, let's talk about the really bad things <laughs> that nobody likes, and that is camping. Now, my one point to camping is that I just don't think people are used to the pace of older Call of Duty's. This game plays exactly like Modern Warfare 3, Black Ops 1, Black Ops 2. I mean, Thunder, you yourself used to make videos of Black Ops 2 of people sitting in the back of the map with LMG thermal scopes just sitting there with two claimers in the, <laughs> besides them just looking down a line of sight. I, I Like, the worm squirm was a thing. Like, let's be real, camping has always been a thing in Call of Duty. It's just that with these new jetpack CODs, which I completely did not play because I hated the jetpack era, um, people are just used to running around like a headless chicken and trying to get kills as fast as possible. And I think that just makes the game a little bit boring. It's less strategic, you're thinking a lot less. Um, and yeah, camping is a problem, camping is pretty strong, but if you look at what I'm doing during this gameplay, I'm- I was moving from choke point to choke point, looking at where- like, look, I know people like to camp in that window, I look there, shoot them, kill them, then I move forward. Like, that's what you gotta do, you can't just run out into the middle of the map and expect not to get shot, but you gotta go to these choke points, kill a few few people, advance, like what I'm about to do right now. I just killed all those kids, reload my gun, get ammo, move forward, get into their spawn, keep trying to get kills. It, it's that type of play that you have to play with to be successful, and honestly, I haven't been having a hard time. Once you get that mentality of, alright, I know where people are going to be if I look there, they can't kill me, and look at that kid get turned on, um, you're gonna start having a much better time. And in addition, like ground war really lets you play however you want. Like if you're using a silencer with ghost and ground war, you can run up behind people and get feet. And it's just it's just fun. Now I think most of Thunder's complaints are coming from the fact that he's playing 6v6. I personally don't think the game was created for 6v6 whatsoever. So my recommendation is to move off of that. Um yeah, I, I do think it's possible to rush. So the main complaints people have with this game. I don't really relate to the maps again i don't think they were designed for 6v6 which is why you're having such a bad time on them i think they're going to be included into the 10v10 playlist as the as the game gets older so i don't think that's the biggest deal um anyway this video is coming to an end if you guys agreed with any of my hot takes please feel free to share in the comment section below um if you are interested in seeing me stream and make more youtube videos please come check me out at my new channel i'm i just restarted so i have very little subscribers and i appreciate every single one See you guys on the next one.